So if you are new to bass fishing and you have not learned the Texas rig yet, you are missing out. In this video, we're gonna teach you how to set it up and then we're gonna go get on the water and teach you how to catch some fish. Hey guys, welcome to the Goal Fishing Channel. My name's Jake. Goal stands for get out and live. Thank you so much for joining me today. So I remember when I first started using the Texas rig, I was about 17 years old. I was taking fishing very seriously at that time. I was hoping to make it a career. And I saw on TV that guys were using it all the time and catching a lot of fish. And I knew that I needed to learn this technique. So I got myself the basics. I got some offset hooks, got some bullet weights, and I got myself one pack of rubber worms. They were black, like seven inch black curly tail worms. Um, which I had never thrown anything like that before. But I was determined to learn it. So I went to a local pond that I did a lot of my fishing at. I spent a couple hours trying it out and I wasn't catching anything. Like I had no idea what I was doing, but then I saw a bass. It was hugging a weed line right next to a muddy bank. And I was standing on the bank. I cast it parallel to the bank, just a few feet past where this uh, fish was hanging out. And I twitch it right in front of him and I see him like hone in on it. I was like, oh wow, this fish likes this, okay. Give it a couple more twitches. And then he hones in on it again. I was like, oh man, I think, I, I think he's gonna hit this. He really likes this. So I give it three more quick twitches, just t -t -t -t. And that bass just slammed that worm. He inhaled it. And so I set the hook, bring him in. It was a nice bass, around two pounds. And I probably wouldn't have learned the Texas rig if I hadn't seen that fish that day. But because I was able to see how this fish reacted, I was able to learn what the fish wanted a little bit. And I was fishing it way too fast, which is a normal beginner mistake, by the way. And so as soon as I learned what these fish wanted, I was able to catch more fish that day. And it has become a staple in my uh, fishing techniques that I use. You have to learn it if you want to catch fish consistently. It is a technique that can do that for you. So let's get into how to set it up and then we'll get on the water and catch us some fish. So the Texas rig consists of a few different things. I'm gonna show you exactly how I like to do it. First things first, you got your, your weight stopper, your bobber stopper. This just keeps your weight from sliding around. You don't have to use it. There's a lot of people who don't because it can mess up your hook set. Sometimes the weight can open the fish's mouth before the hook gets a chance to penetrate. I haven't really had any issues with missing a bunch of fish. And so I actually prefer the feel of having my weight pegged. So you're gonna start with your bobber stopper. You're gonna take it right through the loop. And then you're just gonna pull that bobber stopper right onto your line there, just like that. Pull it up a little ways to give yourself some room to work because you're gonna be tying knots. Then you're gonna take your bullet weight and you're going to thread it right in. Then you've got your offset worm hook. The knot that I like to use is the polymer knot. I use it for most everything. So you're gonna go ahead and thread it through the eye of the hook. Pull through a little bit of slack, a little bit of your tag in, and you're gonna go back through, creating a loop. Just like that. And you're going to tie an overhand knot around your tag end and your line with that loop. And then you're gonna take the loop and you're gonna push the hook through that loop. Then you're gonna lubricate it and pull it tight, just like that. Nice and tight there. Clip off your tag end, boom. There is the skeleton of the Texas rig right there. Your weight stopper, your weight, and your offset worm hook. You're gonna take your bait. In this case, it's a worm. You can fish so many different things on it, and I'm actually gonna be fishing with the craw first, but I end up catching most of our fish on this guy right here. It ends up being a killer. So be looking forward to that here in a minute. You're gonna take this and you're gonna go in, um, not quite all the way to the bend of the hook. Um, you can go all the way down to the bend, but I, and, and I do sometimes, but I'm gonna give myself just a little bit of space from the bend of that hook and I'm gonna penetrate through. You're gonna pull your worm all the way up to the front, twist your hook like that so it sits right on that offset. And then you're going to find where the back end of that hook rests on your worm and you're going to stick it straight through right where that hits. 
and it's gonna look like that on the other side. Now, you can fish it just like this, and that works just fine, but if you're fishing a lot of heavy cover and you want it to be weedless, you just pinch it, pull, lift up, and stick it. And there's your weedless Texas rig, just like that. So you notice up here that this hook is um, just barely poking out there. You can have it so it covers up onto the line some too, but um, I actually like the presentation of having that, that weight just a little bit above it. But it, it also depends. I do both where it's, it's uh, nice and snug up there. But this tends to not like push and smash my worm and make it look a little funky. So having it right there like that tends to work pretty good for me. Keeps it looking nice all the time. That's how you set up a Texas rig. It's pretty dang easy. Now let's go get on the water and catch us some fish with it. Right, so the first thing I'm starting out with today is the Zoom Ultra Vibe Speed Craw. I'm using a two watt EWG Gamakatsu hook and a 5 16 ounce weight to get me down. I'm flipping to the trees with this, so I want it to get down right by the tree and hang out there for a little while. There's a couple ways you can fish this. You chuck it out um, by the tree, in this instance the tree, and you can use this on rock piles, you can use it anywhere. But you let it sink to the bottom. I'm just letting my spool be open so that the, it takes whatever line it needs so it's dropping straight down, especially when you're flipping by the trees. You want it to get right down beside that tree. Then one way is you just give it a couple twitches. Let it sit. Give it a couple twitches, let it sit, pick up your slack. Give it a couple twitches, let it sit again. Twitch, twitch. And you're just waiting for a thump or there to be tension on the end of your line for that bite. The other way to do it is to cast it out and let it sink to the bottom. But this time, rather than giving it twitches, you're just gonna pull up your slack and then lift and then let it slowly drop back down. Its claws are gonna flap as it sinks back down to the bottom. So you're just doing a nice little slow lift and then kind of leaving your rod tip up and letting it slowly sink back down. Now, if you're pitching to the bank and pulling back, you'll actually need to bring your rod tip back down a little bit to let it hit the bottom again. Because otherwise it's just gonna keep following it all the way down and you want it to hit bottom and sit there for a second. That's usually when the fish are gonna pick it up is when it's sitting there on bottom. One of the biggest mistakes that uh, fishermen, when they're first starting out, is they're just working it too fast. Another solid technique is uh, to actually let it sink to the bottom. And this is really good, especially when you're casting to the bank and pulling back. So rather than lifting your rod tip up and twitching it, you actually keep it to the side and you just give it a nice slow drag and let it stop. And you just count the rocks. You're just filling it bump bottom, and it's almost like that craw. No, we were hung up on something. It's almost like that craw that is just crawling on the rocks. And that is a solid way when things are slow, when the bite is slow, to pick up some fish. Got snagged. But yeah, that is, especially when it's really hot in the summer and really cold in the winter, if you're fishing this down deep, just a nice slow drag clank in the bottom just a little bit and it's it's gonna be slow because you got to keep that bait down there nice slow crawl just like a crawdad would be crawling on the rocks down there and that'll help you pick up some more bites too <laughs> got our first one for the day got us a nice little fishy here that was actually on the slow pull gotta find what they want this guy wanted a nice slow crawl Looks like we're gonna be dealing with the wind today. I hope it doesn't get any worse than it is because these waves are already pretty big and a little bit uncomfortable, but it kind of seems like it's laying down. I think that's a fish. Yep. <laughs> okay, guys, this is our third dink on the craw. So I'm gonna switch to something else. The dinks are obviously feeding on craws. I'm gonna switch to the worm and uh, see if we can't pick up some bigger fish. That was a bite. There we go. And it's a better fish than what we've been catching as soon as we switch to the worm. Oh man, that's a good fish. It's fighting like a good fish. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I caught three dinks on the crawl, two casts. And I land a decent bass with the Texas rig worm. Big fish know what they want, I guess. Big juicy worm is an easy target. Feeds them good. 
<laughs> I was gonna show the fish off to you. He just jumped out of my net. <laughs> All right, guys, so when you're picking out your different weights and your different hook sizes, it really just depends on the bait that you're using. You want it to, to look nice on your bait. You don't want this big old chunky weight in front of this tiny little worm, and you don't need it to because this is gonna fall pretty quick with this weight. You want it to look really nice and uniform, and you want it to get down. You want to be able to fill the bottom with your weight. So it really just depends on what bait you're using. There he is. Not a bad fish. Where'd you go, buddy? <laughs> I hadn't been getting bit on the power worm for a while, so I decided to switch it over to a robo worm. Nice little trick worm. So this is the morning dawn hologram color. Six inch worm with the chartreuse tail. And when you're fishing the trick worm, you're not gonna do the raise and drop as much, you're gonna do more of a twitch so you get that chartreuse, chartreuse tail flapping, wiggling around and stuff. And same if there's no chartreuse tail, anytime you're fishing a, a trick worm, usually you're gonna do better with twitching than you are a drag. This guy actually has a uh, leech in his mouth there. Look at that, yum yum. Got him. It's like a decent. Oh yeah, it's a good one. Oh yeah. Oh jeez. <laughs> That's a good fish. Oh jeez, he's taking us for a ride. Oh, come here. Come here. Come here. Yeah, we got him. <laughs> Woo! That's a nice fish. It's a nice solid two and a half to three right there. Solid fish. <laughs> Love it. Love the Texas rig, guys. Like uh, Texas rig gets it done. It is a solid, solid way to catch fish. Between 210 and 214, so we'll call it 212. We're bouncing too much on these wakes out here to really be able to uh, get a perfect reading on them. But two and three quarter, getting up there close to three. Awesome fish. Bye, Purdy. <laughs> One of the benefits of fishing this way is that it's really easy to switch out baits with the Texas rig. You can try all kinds of different colors. It's not like you have to cut and retie every single time. You can go through all kinds of different colors and find out what these fish are wanting to bite on. This one seems to be the best one today. Woo doggy, we're just getting bounced around today. There's one. Oh. Oh my. He didn't feel that good, but he's a good one. Oh man. Oh man, that's a good fish. <laughs> About done, I think. Oh yeah. Yeah. Doing good today. We're getting some good ones. Check out that fish, guys. <laughs> It's another one close to three pounds. Two seven, so two and a half pounder. Nice fish. That robo worm's killing it. Picking up fish on that and some good ones. Pretty fish right there. All right, pretty girl, here we go. Down she goes. My plans have changed quite a bit. I actually stopped flipping to the trees as much because I found a school of fish that has some good ones in it. There's a nice rocky pile underneath that tree out there and then a couple of nice rock piles. Obviously this is all rock right here, but um, they're perfectly formed rock piles that go down. And so these fish are hanging out down there. I'm giving it to them before I go back to fish in the trees. They've also been out a little bit deeper than I thought too. Just so you guys know, all of the tackle that we use will be linked down below in the Jake's Tackle Box section. So if you're interested, check it out there. First time we dropped it down there, we got one. Feels like a good fish too. Yeah, that's a good one. Oh. Oh, gosh. I have no idea how he came on button, but that was a three to four pounder. That was a good fish. 
it's really important not to get discouraged if you're not getting the same results as people that you're watching because that may just not be your style of fishing. There might be something else out there that you're going to get really good at that technique and you're going to love it and you'll be able to catch fish consistently with it. So, but you don't know until you try things out. The texture rig just might be that thing that you love. You don't know if you don't try. Here's a fish. Stay down, stay down. Stay down, buddy. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. Chunky, chunky fish. Don't go on a diet, please. Keep getting fatter. <laughs> That's another 210. Hey, if you're an experienced fisherman that's watching this, this is more for beginners. If you have more tips to share with them that you think they should know as a beginner bass fisherman using the Texas rig, go ahead and give some tips down in the comments below to help them out. Get out of that tree, buddy. Get out of there. <laughs> oh, geez, he's fighting. <laughs> oh, I love it. Texas rig has been killing it. Oh, I've actually got another fish on it right now. <laughs> I had another fish on just dangling there. It's awesome. So this video is part of my basics of bass fishing series. The last video I did was actually on the drop shot, which is something you have to learn if you're a beginner as well. It's something that will increase the numbers of fish that you can catch and good ones too. You can check that video out right here. And as always, remember to get out and live. Peace. Bye-bye. <laughs>